Hello again and welcome to part three of how to rebuild a Coleman single burner stove. I'm Frank from the Old Town Coleman Center and in part one we took apart a Coleman 502 and a 500A stove. In part two we cleaned them up as best we could and now in part three we're going to reassemble them. So hold on, I'll be right back and we'll get busy putting them back together. Welcome back. So I have a Coleman 502 in this box and a 500A in this box. I'm going to put together the 500A mostly off camera. There are a few parts that I'll show you when, when I get to them, uh, but mostly we're going to be working on the 502 stove today. So I'm going to pull it out and first we'll get started with the fount. So these are the parts that will be going back into the fount. The filler cap I will start with first. I have a filler cap gasket I'm going to set inside of here. That groove is nice and clean, so I'm just going to work that gasket down in there so it's nice and flat. If it rolls on you, pull it back out and start over. And once I get it in there, I'm just going to set it down here and turn it a little bit just to make sure that it's seated in there. Okay, now I'm just going to set that down there. I'm going to loosely screw the cap on. I don't want to get it tight because if you try to put the screw in and it's off center, you're going to mess up the threads. So with it still loose, just get in there and get your screw started. And then once you have it started, you can tighten it down and then snug up your insert screw. Okay, so the filler cap's done. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in the check valve. And I'm just going to drop it down in there, and then I'm going to look, make sure it's seated right. I'm going to take my check valve screwdriver, and I'm going to get in there, and I'm just going to start turning it. Okay, and I'm just going to snug it. I don't want to tighten it. Next comes the air stem. Next piece will be the pump. Now, when I put the pump in, I want to lay it on its side, and the inside of the shaft of this is square right here, so it has to fit onto the air stem properly, and I don't want to roll the pump cup itself. So I try to fit it in there and make sure that the pump cup is seated all the way inside, and once you got it right, she'll just slide right in. Uh, the pump cap goes with the oil hole on top, and you just line up the screws or the holes on the side there like that and take the pump clip and stick it in one side and she should snap right up on the other side for you just like that okay the fountain has been reassembled she's ready to go okay next up is the fuel shutoff valve and I need to reassemble it before I can put it in the fountain so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to just set the valve stem and screw it inside of the valve body. The next piece that goes in is the valve stem packing retainer. This is the device that has a flat side and a beveled side and we always want to make sure that the bevel side goes forward so we're going to put that on first and set that in there. The next one is our new valve stem packing. This is a graphite packing just set it on there like that and move it down to the bottom. And then the next thing is the valve stem nut. And I'm going to just for now tighten it with my fingers. We'll put it in the vise here in a minute and tighten it up. Okay, the next thing we can put in is the fuel and air tube. So we're going to put the spring on the bottom of the metering rod and then set it down inside of the tube. We want to make sure that it has, it's free to move and it operates real smoothly. And I will just put it in the bottom here gently 
Make sure it's all lined up. Snug it down. And then just take a 5 16 wrench and just give a little bit of a tug. Okay, now we're ready to go. So what I want to do is I need to compress the new valve stem packing. So I'm going to set this in my vise. Now I'm going to take my half inch wrench and my valve wheel and I'm going to start tightening the valve stem nut. And what I want to do is get it to a point where I can feel the resistance when I turn the valve. It needs to be a little tighter than that. You don't want to get it where it's too tight, you won't be able to turn it, but you want to be able to feel the drag on it. That means that the packing has been compressed around the valve stem and it won't leak. Okay, there's, there's good resistance right there. So now the valve is ready to go back into the fount. Okay, now we're going to place the valve in, in the fount. So I'm just going to start it, and I will show you how you can figure out how to line it up. Um, if you're wondering why I'm not using a thread locker, uh, I never have. You can use thread lockers. You can find out which ones to use on the website. You can see that Coleman used a, a red one here, but I've never found that they were necessary, and if you do it right, you really don't need them. So on a 502, Luckily, I have this decal here to show me basically how to start, and it has an arrow pointing here where the valve wheel will go and here where the regulator stem will go. The way you can do this before re or putting it together, you may have to put this on a device to adjust it back and forth, but the way you can get it really close is you take your burner support and you can just lay it down on top of these three screws here. When your valve is right, you will have this part here in the middle of this notch. So right now I probably need to go a little bit more that way. So let's see what it looks like now. Yeah, that's pretty close right there. So that's how you line the clocking of this valve assembly here. Okay, on the 500A you'll see that the lighter valve, um, the portion that's going to go onto the regulator, actually this will go up into the valve, uh, you'll see that it's centered over the decal. On a regular 500, you can see that this, that same regulator comes up and it is directly between the pump and the filler cap. Now you can see on the 500A that the pump and the filler cap are side by side. So all they did on the 500A was they moved the position of the pump from 180 degrees across from the filler cap to right beside it. When you reference it against the filler cap, it is approximately 90 degrees away from that. So that's how you can tell the clocking on your 500 or your 500A stove. The valve assembly on a 500 is a little bit different because you'll remember you can't pull off the valve wheel, so we had to pull everything off the front. So we're going to have to put it back on in reverse order. The first thing I'm going to do is put on the valve stem nut. The next piece that will go in is the valve stem packing. Remember a 500 has a smaller valve stem packing. It is not the same size as you would be used to on this 502 or, or any lantern. Um, so I'm going to set that in there like that. The next piece that will go in is the valve stem packing retainer, and that's the piece, again, it has a flat side and a beveled side, and we're going to make sure that the beveled side is facing forward, just like the other one. And then finally, we have the little C-clip that we had to take off to move everything off the front. And I'm just going to set that over the end and try to get it back on as gently as possible. I don't really want to mess up these threads, so... I'm not going to force anything. I'm just going to pull it down there. And now that I have it on there, I'm going to take a pair of needle nose pliers and close the, the C on that. Okay, so now I have it closed. If you don't close it enough, you're not going to be able to fit it inside of the valve body. And you certainly don't want it coming off because then your valve will pop out in your hand when you're trying to uh, open it up all the way. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert this into the valve body and 
just send it all the way down there and then again with just my fingers I'm going to put on the valve stem nut tighten it down a little bit just so it's secure okay now I'm going to put it in the vise just like the 502 I'm going to take a wrench and I'm going to tighten it down and I'm going to check my resistance on it yep that's that's real good right there the 500 is a little different than the 502 and we need to put our generator back on here so I'm putting the jam nut on here but I need to thread the generator tip cleaner rod into the end of the valve stem and I'm just going to gently screw it in there and then I'll turn this and now that it's tightened up a little bit I'm just going to take my needle nose grab the stem and give it a little bit of a turn so it doesn't come undone now I want to take my generator and gently turn it while I put it down there because I want the the small wire tip cleaner to go in the gas tip hole up there and I don't want to bend it and once I get it placed on the stove then I will tighten down the generator jam nut. Back to the 502 we can start putting together the upper half of the stove. The way the collar works is you'll see in the front it's got a U-shaped cutout and on the back side it has a slot. The slot is for the burner support and this groove will be for the Bunsen. First thing we want to do is put in the burner support and it goes from the inside out goes like that and it just rests on there and then the Bunsen will go like this and what we want to do is just set this on our stove and basically line it up it it helps if you don't have enough light you just shine a flashlight down in these holes and you can see how it gets lined up okay I have all three of them started believe me that can be a lot of fun in itself um, but what I'm going to do is just take my Phillips head and snug them down and I don't want to mash them down I just want to set them down so the burner support isn't moving the next thing we're going to do is put in the outer burner bowl and the inner burner bowl um, the outer one you just set it on there like that it's got a hole to accept the Bunsen and then your inner burner bowl you just set it down there and with your fingers tighten it up you don't need to tighten this with a, a pair of pliers or anything. Just get it started and as it gets tight, it should all lock in place. Okay, the next thing is the burner cap and rings. Um, you'll remember when we took these off, we decided the top one and the bottom one would be flat and then they would alternate between flat and corrugated. So we're going to start there we'll go flat and corrugated and we're a little bit mixed up here so I'll put that one in there so now we go flat corrugated flat corrugated flat corrugated flat so there are our burner ring set just going to set them down there and of course it will be again fun to try to blindly put the screws into the screw holes down in the uh, inner inside burner bowl but just set it down there very gently and then you start placing these in and trying to get them started. It's really good to have a flashlight. You can just set your flashlight down and look down in there and make sure you have the hole lined up and it's going to make it a lot easier to get these little screws started because this can be a pain. Okay, now I got all three screws started, I think. Yes, I do. And I'm just going to get them down a little bit. Now I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to make sure that the burner rings are kind of centered under the burner cap. And once I'm happy that they are, I can go ahead and just tighten these down. I don't want to get them really tight. Snug them down well. Okay, now our burner is completely back together. Next we'll put that back together the regulator valve. Um, so the eccentric block is going to be controlled by the stem which goes in here so what I'm going to do is you can see that cutaway on the eccentric block and 
we're going to insert this into the body and we're going to try to line it up so it's just center in there and then I can just lay it down and I can just screw in the regulator stem and once it makes contact we will start seeing the eccentric block move and sometimes you have to play with this a little bit to get it work. You can also use an old generator and hold the uh, eccentric block with it. That's the best way to do it on a lantern, but because we can do this horizontally um, it's okay to just to lay it flat like that. So you can see the eccentric block going up and down now. Okay, I'm going to take a 3 8 inch wrench and I'm going to tighten this down. Next we can Put the generator on it. We're going to bring the eccentric block out. I'm going to take my brand new generator and I'm going to gently pull the end of it out. And I'm going to take the bend in the tip cleaner rod and stick it in there like that. And then I'm going to turn the lever down so it locks it in place. And then I'm going to very gently bring the generator down and I'm going to spin it until it seats. And now I'm going to take the generator jam nut, put it down there, and just loosely tighten it up. Now I can put it back in the stove. We're going to insert it across there. The tip will go inside of the Bunsen. And I'm going to just snug down my lock nut a little bit. Now I'm going to bring in my fuel inlet and set it in the inside of the regulator and bring the nut up here and get it started. Okay, now I'm going to take my 7 16 and I'm going to tighten this connection and take my half inch and tighten down this nut and then I'll take a 7 16 and tighten down my generator jam nut. Okay, she's almost back together. The last thing we need to do is put on our grate in the screws and then put on our uh, valve wheel. Okay, here's our valve wheel and direction disc. Put it in there and just get it started. Take a small flathead screwdriver and get this going. And then once you have the screw started, you can just hold it with your thumb and turn it. Make sure she stays up. Just like that. 502 is ready to go. Okay, the last few things we will talk about on the 500 is how to put the rest on because it can be a little bit confusing. If you can see here, right here, there is a, an odd hole. And on the left side of the hole, it says burn. And on the right side, it says light. That is where our lighter lever will go. To get the lighter valve lever into this hole, you have to do a little bit of manipulation to the collar. And... You set it down there and you have to rotate it a little bit forward and don't be afraid to, to turn the lighter valve, but get it in there and then set it like that. The other thing I will show you on the 500A or the 500 is you'll see at the bottom of the plate there are these four little notches here that are cut out. And what they do is that your frame rest will fit on the outside edge of these. So it'll fit on there nice and tight. You don't want to crush it and ruin your paint, but that's what those are for. So I'm going to finish putting the 500 together, put the burner on it, and then I will take them outside, put some fuel in them, and we'll bring them back in here and light them up. So be right back. Okay, the both stoves have been put together now. Uh, what I'm doing now is running a little safety check. I've put fuel in both stoves. I have pressurized both of them and what I'm doing is I'm just waiting, I'm listening and watching, make sure that I have no leaks and I don't see any now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to start them. I will start the 500 first, get this out of the way. Get that generator hot.
Okay. So there's that one, Barna. Let's see if we can get this guy going now. It's generating gas, vapor, can open her up. And if we want to, we just pressurize it more to get our flame nice and hot. She's looking real good. So I'd like to thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, and Facebook. Instructions on how to rebuild a single burner stove can also be found on my website at oldtowncoleman.com. Until the next video, keep them burning.